Things are gearing up for fall camp and the season is around the corner. Texas made a lot of changes this year trying to revamp the culture and get new guys on campus. So there's a lot of excitement, but also a lot of questions. So I figured let's go straight to the source and ask the players themselves. This video is brought to you by Burnt Orange Heroes, an awesome NIL project launched to connect Texas players and fans. It's all in the family with two former Texas players and Derek Johnson and Brian Jones partnering to help bring this project to life. Joining Burnt Orange Heroes gives you access to private chats with your favorite players, exclusive content and in-person events to meet the team yourself. They also host awesome Twitter spaces with your favorite current and former players like two-time All-American linebacker Derek Johnson and even Vince Young. It's a great way to expand your fan experience. It officially launches Saturday, July 23rd, but you can pre-order your pass today. Link in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. Big thanks to Burn Orange Heroes for bringing all the players by for today's episode. Let's kick it off with running back and team leader Roshan Johnson. Excited to have you on, man, and we're lucky to have you and Bajan as our starting running back tandem. How do defenses have to game plan for you two, and how do you see yourself as a runner? Definitely, I feel like we we are a double threat, and we definitely keep def defenses on their toes. Just because one guy goes out of the game, that doesn't mean there's a big drop-off, so to say, with the next guy. So uh, I feel like we just add that aspect of having to uh, put that put that pressure on the defense to adjust. I, I see myself being versatile in a, in a lot of different ways. One of my favorite things, I like the Wildcat a lot, just because, for one, it brings back old memories of playing quarterback. And uh, I, I definitely say playing quarterback and running at quarterback is completely different from running at uh, running back because uh, you have an extra blocker at quarterback. So it, it feels just more natural. Like, like you, you're able to slow things down and just see where people are coming from and where people are going uh, at a much slower pace than running back. I think that wildcat aspect and then uh, just from a physical standpoint of what I bring to the table, I like doing a lot of different things. I mean, I would definitely say I'm a big fan of like gap schemes when you got that pulling guard and you're able just to cut off of him and just hit that hit that seam and make some uh some change out of that. So I mean, yeah, it's a lot of different things that I like at the position, but those are probably the main two. Your Wildcat stuff at the K-State game was crazy. And you mentioned missing getting some reps at quarterback. Leaving the quarterback position, you're giving up a lot of control, and there's a lot that goes into that switch. So what all went into that process? Because that had to have been a tough decision. Yeah, definitely. It was anything but easy. Uh, it was a lot of discussion with my families and weighing a lot of different options. Uh, but at the same time, I just kind of prayed on it and then just kind of just saw all the different ways that it, it could have gone if I would have stayed uh, at, the, at the position. So it's a, a whole lot of different aspects of it that I had to look at. There's probably too many to even list right now, but uh, what it all boiled down to was what I really felt in my gut uh, that I needed to do in order for me to you know, have success on the team, help the team out, and then ultimately uh, advance my career to the next level. I think those kind of tough decisions are what's going to help the Texas culture. And we hear that buzzword culture change often, but not talking about it in the abstract. What things are actually done to bring about that mental shift for the team this season? What does accountability actually look like at the micro level? When it comes to having a culture change, uh, it's definitely uncomfortable. It's a lot of uncomfortable conversations that you have to have. But essentially, what you have to do is look internally and assess like from this previous year that we just had, like, what weren't we doing or what what did we do that we could have done a lot better uh, and so from a from a cultural sta cultural standpoint it was just a matter of having a, a bond amongst each other to where we're able to approach one another if, if one of us isn't uh, withholding the, the standard of the program whether that be through workouts uh, whether it be through school whether it be off the field like just your personal life like just being more accountable towards one another in order for us to collectively win a championship and as you do that that's where the bonding comes. That's when guys start to hang out more and talk to this guy or that guy. And you start to hang out more with each other off the field because you, you create that bond through having that respect of holding each other accountable. And it just becomes easier to get along with people as it goes on. So yeah, it's, it definitely, uh, I mean, it's, it's still an ongoing process. Like I'm not saying the, the, our program is just perfect right now as no program is, but uh, it's just a matter of, you know, addressing those issues and then just, trying to do our, our learn from our mistakes in the past. And we heard you and some of the other team leaders are holding voluntary practices outside of the normal schedule. And I assume that's to benefit the culture as well. Why did y'all decide it's important to get in extra work this season? I feel like it's just a matter of us getting the most out of what we want. I mean, we want a championship. We can't just do a regular a regular schedule. Like, that's cool. But at the same time, like, if you don't do extra, you're not going to get where you want to get. Uh, I feel 
feel like with that, that's the approach that we need to have. And that's the mindset going forward. There's been years past where we haven't had that mindset. So, yeah, I feel like that's the whole motive behind that. Good stuff, man. And we got the new offensive linemen in the mix now. And those are some big dudes. So what are you seeing with the new guys? And is anyone standing out early on? Oh, yeah, they're they're in great hands. The young guys, they've done a great job coming in and just working. Like, like you said, like there's some big some big 18 year olds that are here. So I think if they just keep that mindset of working and just putting the work first, like it'll they'll dominate uh, just from what I've seen so far. And in particular, Kelvin Banks has done a great job of just coming in and just working, putting his head down and working, not really having any any trouble coming from him, just going about his business the right way. So, but like I said, all, all those all those guys uh, have have done pretty good thus far and they've uh they're on the right track and looking ahead after you and Bajan head off to the nfl how do you feel about the future of the running back room with the young running backs like jonathan brooks and Jaden blue well like the future's in good hands along with with coach choice and how he how i know that he goes about uh, training his guys and how he just brings the life into the the unit itself like and I, I feel like he'll attract a lot of good recruits in years to come so I feel like the the running back rooms it should be in good hands, especially along with the uh, with the O line, with the young guys that that should grow as time go, goes on. So I think it'll be they'll be in good hands. I agree, man. And thanks for your time, Roshan. Now let's chat with transfer wide receiver Isaiah Nayer, who is looking to make a splash early on. Welcome to the channel, Isaiah. And you're interesting because you burst onto the scene out of nowhere. You just started playing football your junior year of high school. You end up at Wyoming in a primarily running offense. And then last season, you put up 12 touchdowns on just 44 catches, averaging 20 yards per reception. So what's the story of you even beginning football, getting discovered? And second, what allowed you to go from relatively unknown to a national receiver in such a short amount of time? So I had first went to uh, my new school, Lamar, late my sophomore year. I met my wide receiver coach in a class that he was teaching. He had came up to me at the end of class and he had asked me, you know, was I playing any sports? And I told him no. So he had took me to the facility and he had introduced me to all the coaches. And that's how everything started. I always wanted to play football, but, you know, I just never really attempted to try out but even though i haven't had that exposure i've always known that i have great talent you know that that can be played at the highest level and you know just believing in myself every day i go into the weight room i work hard on the field i work hard in the film room studying and things like that so all of those kind of led to me being able to be the kind of player that i was you know and it's not stopping there it's still continuing so it's a lot more to go out there and do out on that field so so you finish the season in Wyoming, and then it's time to go on to that larger stage because of your self-belief. What was it about Texas's offense specifically that had you interested as a wide receiver? What can Sark help you attain? Really his um, his experience with offensive players, you know, receivers and quarterbacks, you know. He had four first-round receivers back in that 2019 Alabama offense. And then, you know, obviously the quarterbacks. This the pro-style offense, you know, it translates over to the NFL. So being able to uh, already have that experience prior to going to the NFL, you know, that's something that I would definitely want and that's something that I need. And, you know, like just the routes, that's one thing I wanted to work on, just being able able to run better routes and not just show people that I'm only a deep threat, get open and, you know, do all of those things, all of the above. So that's, that's what I say. You're most known for that deep ball ability, but your game is way more than just contested catches. So what's something the fans might not know that you're excited to show them? I want to really show the fans my speed. I look, I'm not the type of person, I don't really go on Twitter to kind of look at the tweets and everything, but like I low-key peep, you know, they say I'm a little slow. And, you know, that's not the case. Being able to show them that breakaway speed and being able to, you know, just catch a slant or whatever and take it to the house. I want to be able to uh, prove that to them. And also being able to run good routes and things like that, creating separation. That's something that I want to be able to show everybody. So. Do you have a top speed clocked yet since you've been on campus? Uh, my top speed so far is 22.63 miles per hour my top speed right there so that's that's pretty fast right there yeah dude you can't legally run in school zones and the wide receiver room has the fastest guys between you whittington worthy even brennan thompson so how do you feel about the room and all its weapons and also how do you guys help each other get open you know we got a lot of talent across the board and all different shapes and sizes we have everything that you could ask for in a receiving group talent is just there being able to help each other get open you know you can't cover everybody 
you know, and I feel like everybody has an ability to where they can't just focus on you. You have to focus on this guy right here, this guy right there, this guy right there. You being able to have that talent across the board, it definitely helps us in situations where, you know, one on one, you know, we take our shots, all the things like that. Compared to the previous few years, that room seems reinvigorated with the hire of Brennan Marion. So what's it like having him as a coach? Coach Marion, he got a lot of energy. The energy he brings, it don't matter what time of the day, he has the same energy. You know, he doesn't change. He's consistent with his energy. And I feel like we need that as a group because, you know, you see a coach that is energized, it'll it'll tra- it'll spray on to you, you know, and then you're going to have that energy to go out there and want to play for somebody like that. You know, he's positive. You know, he, he's just energetic overall. And I feel like that, that's something that's, that's great for our, not only our receiving group, but for our team as well. You know, he brings energy to the team meetings and all of that. It just makes you want to just go harder. I'm thankful to have him as my receiver coach. Y'all should be fun to watch this season, man. And then zooming out to the entire offense, as the season gets closer, how are things looking for the offense overall? Our confidence in the offense. Like we talked about earlier, we got weapons all across the board. So it takes the stress off of yourself, not being able to go into the game and know that you're going to be the focal point, knowing that you're going to have somebody that can take that, that pressure off of you. I feel like it's very great. Just being able to just go out there and execute as a whole, it's going to be exciting. You know, I really can't wait. You know, it's a lot of good things that's in the future for us. I think so, too. Thanks for spending some time with us and can't wait to watch you on the field, Isaiah. Now let's chat with safety Anthony Cook and hear about the defensive side of the ball. What's up, Anthony? First things first, can you tell the fans a little bit about Burnt Orange Heroes? How will the fans be able to connect with you and your teammates? Burnt Orange Heroes has been like a great platform. It's been allowing the fans to connect with us through uh, Discord on um, Wednesday nights or whether that's through Twitter space, Tuesday nights. And um, in the future, like they're going to set up events uh, that allow fans to meet with us and interact with us in person. And you've been all over the secondary playing corner to nickel to now safety. So you have those man coverage corner traits and you also play with a lot of aggression. So how's it been moving around the secondary? And then how have those previous positions helped you out at your new safety spot? In the beginning of my transition, um, I was kind of reluctant, you know, just just to change. But honestly, it came natural. Corner, I feel like each uh, position, you know, has helped at the next position. So corner has helped me at Nick when I'm hoping Nick was going to help me at safety. You know, and playing man, a lot of man last year, that's going to help, you know, a lot. You know, just when on third downs, so when I need to uh, play man, I can do that. And then, uh, as you said, being aggressive, that'll help a lot at the safety position. And where are you at currently? Are you a boundary safety, but also repping at field safety? Um, Honestly, we've been doing left and right. So it's kind of been equal based on the formation. You could be uh, the field safety or you could be the boundary safety. Gotcha. When you are at the boundary playing in less space and more run focus, what's the adjustment been from playing the run from 10 yards out versus closer to the line when you're at nickel? Exactly. Um, when you're close to the line, things happen a lot quicker. When you come from depth, obviously you got time to see things play out. But as far as what I've been doing um, to help me with that, just this entire offseason, you know, getting bigger, faster, stronger. Then I've been watching a ton of film to put me in position, you know, to help me when that time comes. We don't get to hear much from Gideon and his fans. He was a super smart player for us and was all about the mental side of the position. So what's his coaching style like and how is he helping y'all to see the field like he did? Yeah, one of the younger coaches on our staff, very fierce, very passionate coach. Um, he wakes up every day juiced, man, like constantly texting us throughout the day. Some DB film he's saying on Twitter, like, hey, guys, look at this drill. Um, like, what do y'all think about this? Or whether it's just, you know, things to just keep us out of trouble. So, like, he's constantly trying to make us better, constantly pushing us. Then on the field-wise, it's always 100% full gas with him. Even when we're warming up before practice, like, he is full speed. You know, it's no half speed. So that's what I love about him. He emphasizes that a lot as far as just communicating. You know, so the linebackers and uh, cor- uh, corners, you know, know where to be. But like you said, that safety, got to be in tune with your cerebral part of the game. Coach Gideon, like I've learned so much, man. I- I've learned so much to, to where I feel confident um, at the safety position. And I also feel like I've been playing it for like two or three years. Give a lot of that to Coach Gideon, you know, just because of, you know, what he's teaching us. And him playing a position makes it a lot easier just to, to, to believe him, you know. Yeah, for sure. It's got to be cool having Gary Patterson on the staff now as a DB. So what's his addition been like for y'all? Coach P has been tremendous for us, man. Um, he can't coach us on the field. I mean, but he's always walking around, uh, giving us little nuggets and stuff. He's always offering a different perspective. Uh, and I think that's big because Coach Patterson, like, 
that speaks for itself. It's just amazing, like, just to have that type of brain and use it to our advantage. 100%, man. And his eye for talent, too. His ability to identify lower-ranked guys and get them to the league is impressive, especially in the secondary. Exactly. We were talking a little bit about that, I think, in the film room the other day. You know, Coach P was just telling us, like, how he's able to, you know, develop guys. He was telling us at TCU he had lesser talent. He was able to put some of these guys in the league. And uh, he was just telling us, like, you know, a lot of you guys are a lot more talented than the guys I had. So um, hearing that, I, I definitely feel like it's a confidence boost. Yeah, he would know, man. And as far as the safety room goes, we have experienced players in there, but some guys are new to the actual position of safety. So how are things going as guys compete and get more comfortable in their new roles? Yeah, like you said, a lot of guys are new in that safety room. I think guys are coming along good. And we've had a spring kind of be new at the position and we had summer to uh you know help help us get better so i feel like a lot of guys are coming along now it's just a matter of executing well and it's not just the safeties adjusting we have competitions all over the defense and we added a couple new guys in linebacker tucker dorsey and ryan watts at corner so how is the defense progressing as a whole from last year i feel like we're, we're progressing well it looks like you know a lot of guys are confident like the biggest thing is you know i would just say our camaraderie I see a lot more um, guys interacting with each other, whether that's, whether that's D linemen, um, talking in the corners, or, or linebackers hanging out with, with safeties. Like everybody's a lot more close, and I definitely feel like that's going to help uh, help us on the field. We had the whole spring and the whole uh, summer to be uncomfortable. So like now we're feeling like going in the fall count. Uh, you know we're ready. Good stuff. And that's a wrap on Roshan Johnson, Isaiah Nayer, and Anthony Cook. Don't forget to support the players by signing up for Burn Orange Heroes. Link in the description. Thanks for hanging out. Watch some more of my videos here. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you want to support quality Texas content. As always, book on.